This is the Skoda Superb and it's just had a facelift. And if you can't tell, the key changes are new bumpers, a new grille and LED headlights. Plus, there's Skoda lettering on the boot instead of a badge. Under the skin, there's a new two litre diesel engine, but this is actually a petrol. There's also been a slight reshuffle of the trims, but apart from that, it's the same formula that's worked so well for the Superb since this third generation model went on sale in 2015. We've got the estate version here, and to start this review, we're gonna take a look inside. But before we start, if you are interested in buying a Skoda Superb, make sure you go to whatcar.com because right now, you can get more than 3,200 pounds off one. Now inside the facelifted Superb, there's really not much to point out, but you do get some extra chrome detailing, some decorative trim inserts, and from SEL and above, you have this contrast stitching on the seats up front. But apart from that, it's the same brilliant interior from before. So that means build quality is excellent. It's all well screwed together. And remember, this is a class that has cars like the Ford Mondeo Estate, and at the more expensive end, you've got the BMW 3 Series Touring and the Audi A4 Avant. But no matter what car you compare this superb estate to, it is very impressive inside. You've got these soft touch materials up on the dashboard and the switches are really nicely damped as well. And there's just a general feeling of good quality in here. And it's made all the more impressive by the price of this car because compared to anything, this is outstanding value. And also even things like the graphics on the screens and the fonts that are used just make it look quite classy. And certainly you're getting a lot of good quality for the money as well. Also for the first time in a Superb, you can get a digital driver display behind the steering wheel here. So it's really impressive, very clear, very crisp, and it's configurable. So you can decide what you wanna see and how you wanna see it in a similar way to Audi's virtual cockpit. Although we would say that Audi's virtual cockpit is just a bit crisper in the resolution of the screen, but it's still very impressive from the Superb. But it's probably worth pointing out that for some drivers, they might find that the steering wheel cuts off a bit of the driver display. So some people might have to have it higher than they normally would, but that won't be a problem for everyone. It's best if you try it yourself first. And apart from that, the driving position is great. So visibility out the front is really, really good. No problems there, but this is a massive car. So you will definitely be grateful for the front and rear parking sensors, which you get on SE trim upwards. And you might actually want to consider adding a reversing camera as well, because this properly is a wagon. All versions get an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, but go for a Sportline model and you get a 9.2 inch screen. You can also upgrade to that bigger screen on SE and SEL models with the technology pack. As for the system itself, it's easy to use and pretty well laid out, but annoying that the shortcut buttons are on the left side of the screen. It's a bit of a stretch to reach from the driver's seat, and there are no dials to control the volume either. BMW's iDrive system is still more instinctive to use while driving, thanks to its rotary controller interface. But while the build quality and everything else up front is impressive, it's practicality and the space on offer where the Superb Estate really, really stands out from its rivals for the simple reason that it is absolutely massive. So up front, it feels like a really wide open interior. You don't feel cramped at all, even if you do go for a panoramic sunroof. The storage options are decent. The door bins are big enough to fit a 500 milliliter bottle of water in there, no problems at all. And this central armrest underneath has a good amount of storage on offer. It's also air conditioned on this car, which is a helpful addition. A couple of cup holders up here and another hidden storage tray where you can put your phone with a USB port there too. But in the back, that's where this car really, really starts standing out from its rivals. Not much beyond, say, a Mercedes S-Class offers more room in the back than this Skoda Superb Estate. It properly is palatial levels of space back here. You can properly stretch your legs out, absolutely tons of knee and leg room. But with a panoramic sunroof, you can see it does cut into the space available, but still two six footers will definitely be comfortable. And without a panoramic sunroof, then the headroom is massive and very, very generous. So it's hugely impressive back here compared to absolutely anything you can find on the market. Although this middle seat here, you can see it is a little bit raised compared to the other two. So that will cut into headspace a little bit. And also you've got a relatively high central tunnel here as well, but still, even if you're sat in this middle seat and you're a tall adult, you should be relatively comfortable over short distances. Another practical, helpful addition back here. If you pull this down, you've got a couple of cup holders and also it reveals the ski hatch, which you can fold down 
to allow easy access into the boot. And obviously it means if you have this down and you have some skis, then you can poke them through there, sit them here, and it won't disturb the passengers sat either side of it. So that is very helpful. And another reason why the space in the back here is so great and so good and so usable is because these door openings are nice and wide, so it's easy to get in and out. Now the boot, you really can tell just by looking at it that it is enormous compared to anything else in the class. In fact, compared to pretty much any other car you can name, it is huge, properly class leading. And if you need even more space, then when you fold down those rear seats, this really can basically double up as an aircraft hanger. And it's not just the space that impresses because you get a few helpful practical tips dotted around the boot as well, like these hooks around the back to hang some shopping bags. So you don't have your tomatoes rolling around in the boot. You've also got a rechargeable torch, which you can take out here. And there's also a 12 volt socket, not to mention these hidden compartments in the side here for even more space. So clearly the size of the boot and the sheer practicality of the car all round is a massive strength of this car. But how expensive is this car and what's it like to run one? Well, these are the key things that you need to know about buying and owning a Skoda Superb Estate. Well, the Superb Estate is brilliant value compared to every other rival. Add to that impressive fuel economy, low tax costs, gentle depreciation and competitive servicing prices, and it should be cheap to run too, as long as you go for one of the more sensible engine choices. Attractive leasing rates are available for business users that go for SE technology trim with the 2-litre diesel engine, while low CO2 emissions mean that company car tax is sensible too. Skoda appears close to the top of our latest reliability survey, which goes some way to making up for the fact that the warranty and associated cover it offers is nothing really special compared to its rivals. The Superb Estate scored the maximum five-star rating in Euro NCAP crash tests, performing well in every category and receiving particular commendation for its adult and child protection. The Skoda Superb Estate is available with an impressive lineup of engines. So you can have a 148 brake horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol, and even for a car of this size, it offers really good acceleration. But having said that, we would still steer you towards the 148 brake horsepower diesel equivalent because there you just get slightly more effortless pace because it's a big car you're probably going to be carrying a lot of people around in it and a lot of stuff so a diesel just offers better pull from low revs than that petrol equivalent but it's worth saying that if you're just after the saloon version of the skoda superb that 1.5 litre petrol is a great fit for the car and in fact that diesel engine is so good that we wouldn't really bother going for the stronger 187 brake horsepower version. Topping the engine lineup is the car that we're driving today and it's the 2 litre petrol. It's only available with an automatic gearbox and all wheel drive and it is by far the quickest engine in the lineup. In fact it's pretty quick no matter what you want to compare it to in the estate car class because even a 330i touring from BMW offers a similar amount of pace so this really is quick. But it's difficult to recommend because the Skoda Superb Estate is lots of things. But one thing it isn't is sporty. So even in Sportline Plus trim with a slightly firmer suspension setup, you're still going to describe this handling as secure, sure-footed, predictable, but it's not really fun, engaging or sporty. But it's still everything that you'd want from an estate car but it doesn't quite have the driver involvement that some rivals do, but it's still very good. And the ride as well is excellent. So if you do go for Sportline models and you get a slightly firmer suspension setup, but even with that, it's not uncomfortable. We would still though, steer you away from that and go for the standard suspension setup with small wheels if you can, because then you are getting a very comfortable estate car. Diesel engines are noisy from cold and slightly gruff under hard acceleration, but they settle into a distant hum at cruising speeds. All the petrol engines, on the other hand, are smooth and quiet. If you go for a manual gearbox, it has a slick shift and a positive clutch action that makes it easy to drive smoothly. The dual clutch automatic gearbox, on the other hand, can be jerky in stop-start traffic, but on the open road, it changes up and down seamlessly. So now you've heard everything about the Skoda Superb Estate, how should you spec one if you do want to buy it? Well, we'd start by going for the new 2 litre TDI 150 engine, because if you're going for an estate, it's likely that you're going to be dragging around lots of stuff regularly. So while the petrols are impressive, the diesels offer better pulling power. They're efficient too. 
As for the trims, we'd go for SE technology. It gets heated front seats, an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system, and if you need even more space, roof rails. We've mentioned you can get attractive leasing rates for business users on SE technology, but it's worth pointing out that you can't get a Skoda-backed PCP finance deal on that trim. So if you're a private buyer, you're better off going for SE. There are some solid paint options available for no extra cost, but you'll probably want to pay a little bit extra to get metallic paint. And if you want to go even more luxurious, then you can get some slightly more expensive paint options too. As it's such a big car, you'd be wise to consider a reversing camera. You can even pay extra to get park assist so it'll park itself. And for even more practicality, you can get a front seat that folds completely flat, but this one can't do it. If you're impressed by the digital driver display, you will have to pay extra for it, so it's up to you whether it's worth it. So, the Skoda Superb Estate offers a ridiculous amount of space inside, but that isn't the only thing that it's good for, because it has a comfortable ride, a high-quality interior, and it generally represents outstanding value. Right now, it's the best estate car that you can buy. And if you do want to buy one, then we can save you more than £3,200 on one on whatcar.com right now. But before you go and check out all the deals that we have there, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That would be really great. If you've got any questions about the car, leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed because we've got loads of new car reviews coming out every week.